A total solar eclipse is a very rare event indeed. For the first time in 99 years, our country will see a total solar eclipse beginning in the Pacific Northwest on the Oregon coast, a 70-mile wide path of totality, lasting a little more than two minutes at any one location, crossing the country at over 1,700 miles per hour, starting in the Pacific Northwest at 1015 Pacific time, exiting the southeastern coast at 245 Eastern time. Here in the central Alabama area, we're viewing the eclipse starting around 12.03 p.m., and then it reaches its maximum point, about 91% to- totality, at 1.34 in the afternoon, and then ending around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 hours and 58 minutes here in central Alabama. Well, as you probably know, these sunglasses are not any good for viewing an eclipse. I don't care how thick they are. I don't care if you double them up or triple them up. You need these kind of glasses. And as you probably know, these are hard to find. Several stores have had hundreds of them. They sell out, then they resupply, then they sell out. I mentioned the other day that the Montgomery Planetarium on Friday morning when they opened had 450. They sold out in 10 minutes. Some libraries have had them. Some folks are going to welder supply stores and getting the just the lenses that go in the welder's helmets. You need a number 12 or higher rating on those, okay? But if you can't get any of those type lenses, to, to view directly the sun, there are other ways that you can view the eclipse that are pretty easy. If you want to capture a souvenir photo, you don't need anything more elaborate than a cell phone camera. But as Rick explains, the same solar filter rules apply. Except during totality, you have to use a safe solar filter and it has to go in front of the camera. So what I do is I take half of one of those eclipse shades that I showed you earlier and I put it over the camera and I tape it on so that it doesn't blow off or fall off. And then I can just point my cell phone up at the sun, zoom in, and take a picture. You can also resort to a true hands-on technique. You put the sun at your back, and you get out of the way, and you cross your fingers, make a little waffle pattern with your fingers, and it creates several little holes between your fingers. And those project images of the sun right on the ground. Right, and, and one of the most popular that you see is called a pinhole projector. Okay. That's simply using two pieces of cardboard, mm-hmm. poke a pinhole in one. Right. Um, now, when you do that, still never look at the sun. Right. It is never safe to look at the sun. Right. So what you want to do is look at the ground, see where your shadow is. Put the first piece of cardboard up on your shoulder so you can see it. Mm-hmm with the pinhole in it and then the other piece you're gonna as you look at your shadow overlap it and you'll see an image of the sun so what about the forecast on monday well too bad it's not happening on this day i was making this on saturday morning Uh, i think it's not going to be a clear day and it's not going to be an overcast day but it's going to be somewhere in between Uh, a little iffy perhaps like a normal summer day on this map blue is a good thing especially dark blue Excellent viewing across parts of the West, parts of the Great Lakes, and in the Northeast. Every part of America will experience at least a partial solar eclipse. Areas where clouds may be a problem are in parts of the Midwest and across the southeastern states. I'm using words like iffy or marginal. I think many of us will see 50 to 60 percent cloud cover on average, which is pretty typical for an early afternoon on a summer day. So the sun will be in and out. I think we'll get several glimpses of the eclipse. Be patient. There'll be some scattered pop-up storms around, but I think the better rain chances generally hold off till after 2 p.m. A total solar eclipse is when the moon moves between the sun and earth, lasting for up to about three hours from beginning to end, according to NASA. The lunar shadow will darken the sky, temperatures will drop and bright stars will appear at a time that is normally broad daylight. This is a three-hour event, Mm -hmm. okay? First contact will start at about 12.02, 12.03. It's really a slow process because it won't be until about 1.33, 1.34, where we're actual at the maximum coverage that we'll have. Hey, if you haven't seen the show that the uh, Montgomery Planetarium puts on about the eclipse, it's one hour long, it's great. They're gonna do it again Sunday afternoon at two o'clock and you ought to check it out and get in line early because it will sell out, I'm sure. And also they'll do it the day of the eclipse, Monday morning at 10.30 a.m. Rick Evans won't be there because he's already in Eclipseville. 
So Rick, as of 8 a.m. Saturday morning, is already in what he's calling, quote-unquote, Eclipseville at a state park in Kentucky with a bunch of astronomers who have rented out the entire park because hotels along the whole path of totality have been booked for years. And the traffic is already crazy, as you might have already heard, along the entire path of totality. I'm glad I'm not in that traffic. And if you can't watch it in person with glasses or whatever, if you're stuck inside for whatever reason, it's going to be on several TV channels across the dial, like uh, the, the Science Channel has it, the Weather Channel, the NASA Channel, and other channels as well. But if you want to really check it out, you've got to go outside. This is a very rare event. So, happy eclipse viewing. Rich Thomas Weather.